Hey, everyone. Your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. We've got tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today. So let's get started. Today is episode 113, How to Organize Your Pantry. I know a lot of us may oh. need that. Uh, yes, it's a good I time need to do that. I think it's one of those things that, I mean, I've got some clutter in the bottom of my pantry right now, and it's kind of driving me a little nuts. So oh. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm motivated now after this, okay. after we record, I'm going to go clean up that mess. No, it is so funny because <laughs> I take your tips all the time. So do I. I know. This is the best podcast. It's really, I mean, I know, it was like, it's really him. good when your hosts actually use all the oh, tips. Like, well, but I, know, I was telling him something I was going to do. And I said, you know, I heard it on this great podcast. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Okay. Let's talk about our, let's get back into the pantry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. But I don't want to go in there right now. <laughs> well, because oh. It's a bit of a mess. We're going to Mine is you. a thing of beauty. Well, I mean, mine's pretty And organized. it was disgusting before that, before I made it a thing of beauty. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the mm-hmm. thing. First of all, you have to think about the space that you have a, for a pantry. I mean, not That's everybody's going right. to have a butler's pantry. Not everybody's going to have a walk-in sort mm-hmm. of pantry closet. Some people are going to have a cabinet, maybe a two-door cabinet if you're lucky. Yeah. Some people are just going to have some mm-hmm. shelves. So we're talking about all kinds of pantries, all shapes and sizes. So what I would suggest first is, even though there might be a common sense or designated pantry or cabin that you would say, oh, okay, that's where we're going to put the food or the boxed goods and the canned goods and things like that. There may be more room in your kitchen or even a, a separate closet if you're not using it for lots of coats and mm-hmm. things like that, mm-hmm. that you could then take over that real estate for a pantry. Mm-hmm. That's so, a very good idea. Yeah. Before actually, you, you know, start, the- yeah. Think the about the space house that, that we have. rent out. Mm-hmm. It has mm-hmm. no pantry in the kitchen. The kitchen's pretty small. Mm-hmm. but So you actually have to go a little ways outside the kitchen, and there's a hall closet that has shelves in it. And I'm assuming that's supposed to be the pantry. But, you know, I mean, they kind of – it seems like a bit of an afterthought. But, yeah, it's great to have that. So uh, Pantries are so important, though. Uh, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be in – your actual kitchen. Hey, and listen, I have I have a big three door pantry in my kitchen, and I have um, metal racks out in my garage mm-hmm. that I use as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Okay, but here's Overflow. here's a tip. Here's <laughs> right. a tip of what you can do, and we mm-hmm. did do this when when we were, had the building when we had our house designed, and you know I was I got to design it, and you know put the, it's a lot easier when you when you're having your house built. But you could do this after the fact, and that is I went ahead and had a granite shelf put in that we have some things on top of it. I have a toaster in there. I have Mm -hmm. the Keurig, uh, the blender, a lot of things in Mm -hmm. there. And then I've had them install plugs. So everything could be put in there. That's brilliant, Anita. That's such a good idea. And I think uh, episode 114 is going to talk about what's on your Mm -hmm. kitchen countertop. So that's already a really good idea. Right. So if you can get the plug in there, so you can get some of that stuff off the kitchen countertops. And it's important that you have a, um, non flammable um, yes. surface. Yes. So it's not, so ours there. is not on a wood mm-hmm. shelf. That toaster is on a granite. But also, you mm-hmm. want to make sure that it's got some room away from the wall and everything. So, um, yeah. Here's what I say if you're, if to organize your pantry, you really need to start at ground zero, which means an empty, clean pantry that you have scrubbed out. That's yes. your, because it's amazing when, um, I, I guess I did this maybe three months ago when I finally got, you know, out of all my, well, I was still in one kind of a cast, but got out of my hard cast. And I just was so frustrated for, for not being able to do anything. I thought, I'm just going to clean the pantry because it was such a disaster. I took everything out of it. I had five boxes of lasagna. Oh, now, wow. how yeah. I don't cook lasagna that often. <laughs> and I had seven bottles of ketchup. Like it takes oh, us gosh. two years to use a bottle of ketchup. Right. Oh, I know. I so, know. They're and- all hiding back there. So I don't know why I always kept putting it on my grocery list for somebody to go get. So take <laughs> everything out, clean it all out. But here's the thing. If it's organized, you won't do that. Exactly. You'll know where the ketchup is. You'll see whether you have yes. one or 15. I yes. just noticed there's something in our pantry that there's six of. And I asked Kevin, I said, are you aware that we have 
six of these because he just ordered something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, so definitely have mm-hmm. a place for everything and uh, and here, that does help. Here's what here's what I I did that I thought was really helpful. I grouped like things together. So yes. all of my and we have um air we have uh, a place to put um like uh canned goods and things actually on the doors that open up. Oh right. But they are so heavy mm-hmm. that I decided to forego that. Yeah, we didn't. We don't have uh, spices mm. on the door. It's actually mm-hmm. on a wall in the pantry. Now I do have my spices on the door, but my but I I used to have canned goods and like my boxes of um, uh, stock and broth and things like that. It just got to be too heavy, mm. so yeah, I decided that's not I was good for the doors. No, know, right? no. Well, I mean, they held up. They've held held up for twenty three years, but I just but they were hard to open. When you open them, I mean, yeah. I literally. Um, slammed my cat's tail in it once. And, oh, ow! And his tail broke off. Oh no! I yes. don't want to hear this. But he's fine. He has this cute little bottle he's brush fine. tail. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Sh- it was awful. But the door was that heavy. Strangest that went- <laughs> thing you ever found in your pantry. A uh, cat's oh, tail. Part of a cat oh. tail. Yes, it's funny now. It wasn't funny at the time. I was oh, so I was like horrified I'm sure yeah, for months. Think it's says, funny I don't now think either. So. Maybe your cat's still kind <laughs> oh, of burdened by the whole. No, my, our our animals have like the best life ever. They're like you know, there's a sign, best house for pets, and they all seem to. I we always seem to get strays and things well, here. But anyway, that so here's one of my now. tips that I like. Well, can I can like, I just oh, finish, Anita? Sure, I'm so, sorry. That's okay. So the door became so heavy that I decided this is not good, and I ended up getting baskets. Now I've got a double pantry on one side and a single. The single pantry has smaller baskets, but in that pantry, they're all the same size. And in the double pantry, I got bigger baskets, but in the double pantry, they're all the same size. So I have like all my canned goods in one basket. I can actually slip out. So I'm not like foraging around. heavy? If I don't keep, goods well, this is the other thing. I don't keep a lot in there. Oh, okay. I've just, you know, how often do you need three cans of tomato soup? You know what I'm saying? I don't use a lot of canned goods as it is, Mm. you know, maybe beans and um, uh, tomato sauce and things like that. But then I've got another- But when you can pull the the basket out, then you can see what's in there rather Uh, than having to- Right, but if you have a lot of canned goods in there, it's going to be too heavy to pull out. So just Well, the, the moral of the story is don't put a lot in there. Yeah. And then just, I have my pastas all together. Mm-hmm. I have like all my drinks. Now they, they aren't in a basket because that there wouldn't be enough room. They're just all in a, a one part of a bottom shelf. Do you use wicker baskets or? I do. But then so I can also. Can you see what's in each one or do you have them labeled or how do you have? Them? I just know what I have in them. Okay. I mean, you can see what's in them. I just have to pull okay. them a little. And then the other really smart thing I did is I got two lazy Susans. Oh, you know, good idea. Those turntables. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I put, my, I, I, I'm a collector of like, I love to cook. So I had like, I must've had 20 different kinds of vinegars, oh, oh, pear yeah. vinegar, yeah. champagne vinegar, mm-hmm. you know, chipotle pepper vinegar. <laughs> and I, I might've used once. So I pared it down, whatever I could fit on that um, turntable that lazy Susan, that's all I could put in. Those are the only vinegars I could have. There yeah. you go. I think that's a smart idea. And it's just because you have it doesn't mean you have to keep it in your pantry. If your pantry is right. overloaded and there's something in there you're really not using, get it out. Well, not only that, just because it's in there doesn't mean you have to keep it. I that's had two saying. huge yeah. boxes that I said to my kids and I said to my mom, hey, do you want this? And I said to what my assistant who comes to help me with my blog, do you want any of this? And by the time they were done, it was done. I only had like four or five things left and there I just go. pitched those. Yeah. And even this time of year, if you are doing uh, what Yvonne said, and I think that's a great idea, just set aside a couple hours or an hour, take your whole pantry and you got to do kind of an all one fell swoop. So when you clean it all out, scrub it down. And when you're going to put the stuff back in, if Mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, and I'm never going to make that canned green bean casserole Mm -hmm. again that my aunt Mm -hmm. liked at Thanksgiving, (laughs) put a bag together. This is a great time of year. There's for these food drives, sometimes yes. they have them at your kid's school, or there's a local food bank where you could just drive by and drop mm-hmm. it off. And then you're doing some good with your canned yeah. goods that Absolutely. are just cluttering up your but, life. But just watch things like 
cake mixes and things. I had three spice cake mixes that must have been like eight years old. Oh and yeah, Check I kept those putting them back, days. going like, "Oh, I'll, I we love spice cake. I'll use them." So, but I'm not a baker, so they just had to get pitched because mm-hmm. they yeah. were out of you know yeah, they were out of date. Yeah, they're probably not good anyway. Mm-hmm. So, oh, same like- thing with a lot of other like baking powder. Look at your expiration dates. They don't. It doesn't. They don't. They're not activated forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, 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 right. they're not. So I, a lot of things in the pantry too. I mean, when it's something like a box or a can, it's easy to stack them up on a shelf. But when you, but a lot of times there's some packaging that doesn't stack well. And you know what I'm talking about? A bag of pasta, mm-hmm. a bag of rice or something like that. So I actually have the metal shelves and I have uh, metal baskets, I should say. And you can see right through them. So mm-hmm. you can see mm-hmm. what's in them. But I have one for for nuts and dried fruits and one for pastas and one for things like quinoas and seeds and things. So, um, you know, I've got it organized by what's in them and you can mm-hmm. see right through it. So that, that really helps me get all those oddly shaped things organized. Here's what you're saying. And I was saying too, group them by like things though. Yes. You right. don't want it's, your, you don't so, want your flower over where your canned goods are. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so also I'm saying that in your pantry. You need to either label mm-hmm. them or be able to see in the basket what's in it because some of these I know you said they're yours are wicker, mm-hmm. but you can kind of see on top or you know oh, what's yeah. in there. And mine you can see through them. So that was another kind of tip is to make sure you know what's in there or have them labeled or now have that's a way the so goal. you can see what's in them. Anita, that is the goal to know exactly what is in your pantry so right. you're not wasteful. Things like flour and things mm-hmm. like sugar. Um if I have an overload, I put them in very large, like ball jars, but the great mm-hmm. big ones, I can get them yes. locally. And I keep a lot like my dried beans and things like that. Rice, I keep in those. So I don't keep mm-hmm. them in the original packing. Mm-hmm. I have the uh, the um, baskets for uh, like some canned things, some pastas, but anything I can fit into a jar, I label it and put it in the top two shelves sort of Mm -hmm. in, in like things, um, organized. Right. Another thing I do is put those things that are not used that often. We have some emergency hurricane supplies and those are on the top shelf. So, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, the punch bowls and that sort of Mm -hmm. thing, you know, I don't, I make sure all that stuff that we're not probably going to use anytime soon is way up high. Mm Mm-hmm. I just want to jump back into, you know, creating space for the pantry. I have found with some clients over the years when they want to do something in their kitchen and I look around and I think, and these people oftentimes are maybe not fanatical cooks, but for whatever reason, over the course of time, they have collected a tremendous amount of pots and pans Mm -hmm. and they only use one saucepan and Mm -hmm. one frying pan and maybe one other pan. Clear all that stuff out. If you're yes. having a hard time finding so a place for our true. pantry, go through all that. You may end mm-hmm. up, you know, sometimes like the socks that somehow get separated and then eventually divorce. The pots and their lids, sometimes that happens mm-hmm. and you end up with more mm-hmm. lids than pots. And so you don't need all those pots. So I would say call down all the things that you have in your kitchen if you're struggling for some nice pantry space. And then if you can have it all in one area, that is you know, the goal. Like pantry, yeah. Hashtag pantry goals, you mm-hmm. know, something like that. But if you have to have two different areas, then create, okay, this is my my baking zone. You know, this mm-hmm. is my dinner, you know, weekday dinner zone. And then maybe you have another area that maybe if you want to have some specialty vinegars or spices or stuff that you don't use a whole lot of, then maybe you can have a different space for there if you mm-hmm. can't have it all in one spot. Mm-hmm. And another thought would be, if you have shelves or certainly if you're creating shelves, do not make them so deep unless you've got some way to pull out a drawer. Well, the basket you can. You yeah. Know, or drawer. Because if it's just mm-hmm. a shelf and it's super deep, there's going to be things that get stuck back there that you don't remember about. So Kelly, uh, I want to restate something you've just said that I think uh-huh. is really key and critical. But could that mean I'm getting... Oh, the <laughs> tip of the day, <laughs> day I think so. If you feel the need to repeat it. Okay. It must so, be good. I, I'm not sure you said it this way, but I know oh, this was your point. Oh, she's backing off. No, 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 no. You got it. You got it. I'm just saying I may not restate it Are exactly you sure the way you said she it. Got it. She got it. She got it. Let me say it. <laughs> wow. The problem may not be that you don't have enough state, space. The problem may be that you got too much stuff. Ah! 
That, Isn't that what I love you the said? way you stated mm-hmm. it? I'm going to share it with you. Let me share. It. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I, you know, for example, when my uh, in-laws passed away. I mean, we got all their stuff and she had all their kitchen stuff. And I was really tempted just to keep all of it. And I thought, wait a minute, how many cheese graters do I really need? Mm-hmm. How yes. many pots and pans do I really need? So uh, we got, we did not keep a lot of those kitchen things because I felt like, come on, I'm just going to end up having space for this. I mean, really, I don't need all this stuff and someone else mm-hmm. probably would love to have it. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy-to-reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co dot co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Well, and here's the other thing. How many small appliances do you need? I mean, and here, here I am. I have like an evil skeever pan and I have a pit cell maker and I have, you know, my. And, no, I do use the pit cell maker at Christmas. So I'm not, but you know, you have really convicted me to go out and get rid of, I, and I actually have a big Amish cupboard in my garage that I keep like my overflow in. Cause I do love to cook, <laughs> <laughs> but some yeah. of those things I don't need. And I did learn, I have one good nonstick pan, one good, um, uh, well, I use an all clad good pan yeah. and they're just, and then I have, I do, do, do love my cast iron. I have one cast iron pan. I have, um, and then I have some, uh, La Crusade mm-hmm. and a small saucepan and that's it. Mm-hmm. And this go. is, as we said in the beginning, this is such a great time to clear mm-hmm. out your pantry because you might be buying more food and, you know, just because of the holidays. That's right. And because you might be having holiday guests. And if you are having holiday guests, we want you to peruse our sponsor's website, smithandnoble.com mm-hmm. slash DTT, because after you take the time to clean out your pantry, you may want to tackle another 
pre-holiday guest project and get some new winter treatments. And smithandnoble.com slash DTT has a wonderful offer right now. You'll be saving $300 off your purchase of $1,000 or more. And as you know, wonderful custom-made winter treatments can transform a room and they will really impress your guests if that's what you're after. And they will really make your guests feel cozy and warm in the bedrooms or the rooms that they're sleeping in because you can get privacy lining and you can um, get it all installed by Thanksgiving if you order by October 30th. So you've still got some time to Mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, Smith & Nova will help you with free design consultations at home or by phone. They offer free measuring and guaranteed perfect fit installation. So again, order by October 30th for guaranteed delivery and installation before Thanksgiving. Or guess what, you guys? The product is free. Oh, I love that. Wonderful. Yeah. So Smith & Noble is the only window treatment company that guarantees installation before the holidays. So again, the offer is $300 off every $1,000 you spend. So if you spend $2,000, you get $600 off. It just keeps getting better and better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So head to smithandnoble.com slash DTT to take advantage of that offer. So back to the pantry. I think that having a messy pantry would really, really upset me. I can't think of a time that I've ever had a messy pantry. It's kind of like, you know, where there's food concerns and, uh, you know, things you're going to prepare for your family to Mm. eat. That has to be super clean, super tidy. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really something that's manageable. Maybe you go in there once a week or once every two weeks and just kind of rifle through. And, you know, even if you have a bag of rice and it has like not enough rice, to make for like a gerbil, you know, I, you know <laughs> maybe throw that out. Oh, you know? or, or, or get the get some big glass canisters. Yeah, and that's that is a that's what I do with most of my things that aren't in the basket. It works so well. Yeah, great like idea. Breadcrumbs, dried beans, rice. Right. Couscous, any of that, they go into canisters. And a lot of my, and actually a lot of my. Um, Spices now. I have them in very small ball jars. Mm, I definitely pare down my spices. I used to. I I love spices, and uh, but you know they don't last that long, and you really should be up on that too. You know Mm -hmm. you can't have Mm -hmm. even though the saffron costs a lot of money. You know if it's been in there for a couple of years, Mm -hmm. it's done. You know don't don't bother making a fabulous recipe. You really should write the date on that you buy it. I don't. That's a great idea. But it is. I mean, it is good. How often do you use pumpkin pie spice? I actually use it a lot. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we make pumpkin pancakes that are flourless. Ah. They're gluten-free all the time. I mean, they are so delicious. Nita, send me that recipe. I will. Just slot that that in the show notes if Mm -hmm. you have them. Or like cream of tartar. I make my own um, um, tartar sauce, but that's the only time I make it, use it. You know, there's just Mm, things that you may have in there, um, like poppy seeds. I don't make poppy seed cake that often. And I just, I I don't think I want to use poppy seeds that have been two years old. Yeah. Yeah. Now, because when you get a recipe and sometimes you need, you know, coriander and cumin, and Mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden you have all these things and you're not using them that much. So take a look at Mm -hmm. all of those things. And, you know, the crackers that you bought that you thought would be good and then they weren't. That happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you've opened them and it's been a couple of weeks, yeah, a month or Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's probably time to go. But I really, I mean, you know, I like to repurpose everything and I'm not going to say I repurpose (laughs) food. I was going to say, what are you doing with crackers? (laughs) Crackers and rice. What are you doing? It was so great. No, but um, he, these are some things that when I think of it, if I go in and to the pantry and uh, my girls love fresh breads and I'll, there's a special place that I go and I get the fresh breads. And sometimes you buy a baguette or something and it gets half eaten or and then it's getting hard. You can, if you feel badly about tossing that, make if it's not way beyond its prime, make some croutons. It doesn't yes. take too long. Or, or breadcrumbs. Or, exactly. Or, or breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. So there are things that you can do. I mean, you know, tomatoes are not necessarily, they don't go in the fridge. They should you know, be on the counter somewhere. I guess they could be in your pantry mm-hmm. because they, they don't want to be in the fridge. Well, but I put my potatoes if you get, and onions in there for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you get some of the, you know, and they maybe the little cherry ones or something and they're starting to like, mm, maybe they're not going to look so great in a salad, but you're just catching them. 
I put them in a Ziploc bag and I use them them. when I'm doing a bolognese or something like that. Yeah, freeze them. They freeze well. Hey, I I have a question for you. What do you do with, I mean, you, you, you in California, probably, I, we can still get paper and plastic bags. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners can as well. They because, let Ziplocs over the border into California still. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I mean, no, I mean like the, you know, like you, you get your groceries in. Now oh, I yeah, have yeah, yeah. Amazon, um, those great Amazon cooler bags when I get um, my my uh, Amazon food that comes here, mm-hmm. Amazon fresh. And, but if I go to the grocery store, I cannot tell you how many times I'll leave my, my cloth <gasps> bags in the car. Oh, so yeah. they'll give me plastic bags. Mm. I hate to throw them out. What do you do with them? Oh, I, well, that happens to me every once in a while. And I tell you, especially when it's Trader Joe's and they say, Oh, do you have any bags? And I think, Oh, <gasps> I left them in the car. I'm so sorry. I feel so <laughs> awful. Sometimes I just leave the store and I go get them in, uh, in the car. That's normally what I'll do if I forgot them because they're so nice there that way. Okay, but what but happens when you're, you're lazy in a rush, and yeah, you don't well, want to you're do in a rush or your car's too far away, then I just bring them back and I use them in the next time. Okay. Oh, okay. And then eventually hey, those plastic ones, unless they're the super thickies, they don't let really me, last. Mm-hmm. Or, let me throw in a tip on those bags because I just read this and they said that those bags, those reusable bags, People don't wash them and they've had food in them and they're covered with gross bacteria. I don't want to go and tell you all <gasps> you the bacteria. You are such on a germaphobe. Well, so they're saying mm-hmm. if you're doing the reusable bags, well, especially if you've had raw meat in it, some of it probably dripped on the bag. So no, this was this was not just oh. me. They're saying wash those reusable bags and it gets rid of 99% oh, yeah. you of the have bacteria. To, you have to wash your reusable bags for mm-hmm. sure. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you don't have to do it every single time, but I would do that. And then it, uh, with the... the um, but I want to know where you store your store your plastic bags. Like oh, I store I mine store in my them? pantry. They're a mess. Okay, That's the well, only thing messy in my pantry right now. If there are those sort of, sort of crinkly ones that you can swish up. So I wrap mm-hmm. them around my fingers and mm-hmm. then I tuck it in. So I make a little ball. Yeah. And then I'll put them all inside of another one and I put them right in my trunk. Oh, that's good, a good idea. idea. Yeah, I don't, I, You're I don't leave good ideas today. I don't leave them in my pantry. And then every okay. once in a while, it's the same thing. Like I'll look in the trunk and it's like, oh, well, some of these are, you know, or I use reuse the paper ones too. And mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, after a few uses, the handle falls off. So then that one has yeah. to just go. But I've given it uh, several lives. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's yeah. you know, yeah, we, yeah. It doesn't we owe me anything when it gets. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, having a doggy, sometimes those bags come Oh, in, there you can use saying. them for that. I didn't even think about that. Oh, Why are we using yes. them for that instead of buying all those Oh, I don't bags. buy. Emma does not get the fancy rolled oh, she bit baggies. Oh, well, that's No, he's using. like hardcore from, you know, the Ralph's grocery store bags. Oh, well. <laughs> Now, now listen, that's another, this, that's the second tip of the day mm-hmm. is oh, use grocery yeah. store bags for the dog. tip of the day. Yeah. Now, you know, sure. your goal is the trifecta. So oh, keep on the coming. three. Oh, no. Oh, keep no. I've coming. only got, oh, I've, I've got <laughs> like so a much minute pressure. and a half. <laughs> oh, we, we do know how to make a good time out of absolutely nothing, girls. So you know, <laughs> oh, you know that, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. The do. tip of the day is taken very seriously Are you telling by her listeners. that her tip of the day is nothing? Oh she tries, no. no! She no. does. She does try. Oh, excuse the gosh. pun to poo poo other people's tips of the day. Oh, poo poo in the bag! Oh, oh my goodness, poo poo in the bag! No, did I sent you guys? I, can't, I, I one of the comments on my. Blog. I saw that was when I did the um, panels and I think that's what it was. And and it was so adorable and it made me laugh out loud that my, the comment on my blog was ding, 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 tip of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I thank, love it. Yeah. How cute you. is that? Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. 
Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT. And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Thank but you. Let's, get, uh, let's get back to our pantry. Mm-hmm. The idea is that you want to have in your pantry only what you use. You want a clean pantry. You want it organized. And you want to know exactly what's in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, can that's I throw in a, a holiday one that's coming up? I did this last yes, year. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Okay. You may find that you have a lot of cookie cutters and you may Mm. not be a necessarily a cookie cutter person. Cookie cutter things, I don't know. They just kind of arrive and they stick to you and you don't know. Actually, Mm -hmm. I don't remember buying any of these cookie cutters. A weak moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, oh, look at that. At Williamson Homa in the cookie. 12 different size Christmas trees. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or the, you know, the, the, the angel cookie or I'm trying to think which one is really like the reindeer cookie. Like no one wants to make the reindeer cookie because the legs always fall off. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't work. work. Or so, they get a little brown when you yeah, cook them. Mm-hmm. And you could repurpose them into Christmas ornaments if you wanted to. Or you could just, again, mm-hmm. move them along, you know, give them away. And those or things, if you I had have a giant Christmas basket of gathering, them. use that as your uh, place <gasps> <your> name cards. <gasps> No, ding, 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 ding. here's what ah! else you can do. <laughs> Have just do what my mom does and wraps things up that she no longer wants and she gives them as gifts. Oh, there you, oh, 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 there you go. <laughs> my, my mom is as dumb as a fox, honestly. Oh, She's so, going like, I so we can figure gift, out a way to get so rid of all of these snow babies. Stuff we don't want, but we can't <laughs> reuse the Gift bags that came in. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that, but I'm thinking. Like minds, Anita. I wasn't even saying I didn't want to say it, but. (laughs) Hey, somebody would really like to maybe get those cookie cutters. As a matter of fact, I have about a half dozen of my grandmother's. Yeah, but I'm ready to pass them on now. You're ready to move on. How about using them just as a gift bag decorator? You know, just tie it on the bag with some ribbon. Now that's an adorable idea. They, that'll either go in the trash or they just feel like they need to keep it. And guess what? All of my it's gone. Yeah, all <laughs> of my gifts are going to have cookie cutters on them this year. Because <laughs> the only one I ever really use, um, I have a pair of like a um, gradient fluted ones. Now I'll use those. I have a square and round, and I have a star, and they're the only ones I use. So mm. all the like 150 other ones I have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There yeah. You go. I literally have one of those. Remember at Christmas time, you would get popcorn in one of those great big yes. uh, oh, cans. Yes. yes. I have a can full of 
cookie cutters. You yes, are kidding yes. me. I used to, I used That's to a lot really, of cookie cutters. I used to make all shapes and sizes and I haven't done it for so long, but you know, you hate to get rid of them because you just may need someday that well, Christmas that's true. stocking. But that's we just one of those things we're talking about. I know. It's you know time. you're not going to use it. So, it's yeah. time. That's right. But can we just talk for one second about when did that giant, giant tin of popcorn become like a Christmas staple with the orange and the cattle corn and the like some no some great marketing company who does the school like school Ugh. fundraisers thought this would be an awesome well way overpriced it will charge fifty dollars for the can and yeah. then you know you can sell a whole bunch of them oh no but you find those everywhere they're like in the cvs and whatnot. now yeah. they are now they that are but i that they so started as fundraisers yucky. Now, honestly, I would rather have your mother's old socks in a, in a <laughs> reused gift bag with a cookie cutter attached to it than that. <laughs> like, what is with that orange cor- popcorn? What is that? I would, I would take the beaded handbag, stand the old <laughs> sock, stand the old sock in the cookie cutter. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my god! Okay, we better stop. And we yeah, have not had know. any wine on. No, none. One. Uh, I don't know if you you heard a couple episodes ago. We had to do it on a Friday evening, and we had so we had like to have wine. hours of trouble. Not not if, or anything we did. We just had technical difficulty, and we all decided having a glass of wine was the answer. And then we recorded. So, and but this was. is just this is just happy on life. How so mm-hmm. funny. Mm. So yeah, I think we gave you a, a lot of tips uh, for organizing your pantry, I and we went a little so. off road as well. Oh, but- <laughs> it was just fun. But you know, bottom line, get into your pantry, start cleaning it out. We've got the holidays coming. Um, you really, we really need to n- make room for the things that we actually need during the holidays. And uh, listen, we want to see your pantry. So if uh, you take <laughs> yes, a picture of it and it's all nice and clean, um, make sure you send us a picture and or a before. Before and after. Oh, that would even be better. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Great idea. <laughs> and But remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey there. If you're loving our podcast like we're loving our podcast, we would love you to rate and review us. Head to iTunes to do that. It's easy and it would mean so much to us.